We'll open the uh, yes. We'll open the meeting at six o'clock for a public hearing on the uh, fiscal year 2021 Deerfield Elementary School budget. So I will at this point in time turn the proceedings over to Mr. Modesto and Ms. Perez. And if, if I could, real quick, if I could just convene our select board real fast, because um, we're going to have a meeting as well. So um, I call a meeting to order of our uh, Deerfield Select Board, um, Board of Health meeting um, for um, 6 o'clock, and then we'll reconvene at Town Hall at 7.30. If anyone wants to join us there tonight, it should be fun as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Anybody's looking for more exposure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, so it's me for the public reading. I'm going to hand it over to Shelly. She knows the numbers. Um, um, so we have a, a budget increase of 2.9% that we are proposing and discussing tonight, looking for approval on for the Deerfield Elementary School for FY21. Uh, that dollar amount is $140,211 for a total general fund town appropriation of $4,974,133. Um, so this includes adjustments for expenditures based on actuals from the prior three fiscal years, as well as input from the principal and administrators in regards to operational and programmatic needs and wants throughout the building. Uh, funds have been included for wage increases for IAs based on the existing contract, teachers, um, based on a possible settlement of their contract and wage increases for any non-union personnel, which includes custodians, um, central office staff, principals, uh, secretaries, anyone who is not in a union agreement. Uh, the budget also includes the addition of two new positions, which total one FTE. They are both part-time. Uh, that is an addition of roughly $48,000 to the budget. It's not all hitting the general fund, however. We are going to fund those positions from other funding sources as well as the general fund. Um, the 0.4 psychologist position, new hire, would be funded partially from general fund and partially from school choice. And the 0.6 certified occupational therapist assistant would be funded primarily from school choice, not hitting the general fund at all. If you have um, the detailed budget and look line by line, there are some expenses that have increases to them. However, we did make reductions to offset that, and the majority of the 2.9% increase is strictly related to salaries and wage increases across the board for all staff. Uh, I'm going to go through and highlight a few of the um, major increases to the general fund. So we added in uh, $7,000 for teacher mentor stipends to be paid from general, general fund. These were previously paid from a grant. Um, that funding is not guaranteed every year, but this is a recurring expense for us. So we added that in. Uh, $2,000 was added to the professional development line for teachers and IAs. We increased summer salaries based on actuals from the prior three years by $6,000. Uh, there's a minor increase to textbooks of $1,700 and also an increase of uh, almost $3,000 for Nature's Classroom to provide support mm -hmm. and financial assistance for our families and our students so that more can attend that event. Um, special Ed Department also has some increases, so we're looking at an addition of $7,000 to the general fund to cover consultation services that may be needed and SPED transportation for Deerfield Elementary is increasing by $16,800. As I mentioned, we did have some offsets to the budget, even though those are going up. Um, we were able to bring our utilities down by 18,000 based on actuals from the prior three years. Uh, we were able to decrease employee separation costs and benefits by $8,000. And uh, we changed our custodial contract services. We dropped that line item, but it's a line, line item that hadn't been used in several years. So that was a decrease of $5,000. Salaries and wages for teachers are increasing approximately 110,000 or 3.9% based on a potential contract settlement, including column and step changes. Now that doesn't all hit the general fund because some of our teachers are paid from other funding sources. So it's not a direct hit to the general fund, but I did want you to be aware of that number. Our IA salary, same concept. Some are paid from other funding sources. However, the increase for our IAs is 26,000 or 3.6% based on their contract. 
and there is uh, wage increase or adjustments of 34,800 for anyone else that is paid um, salaries through Deerford Elementary, non-union personnel, administration, central office staff, et cetera. Um, the Deerfield Elementary cost share is increasing for central office staff um, based on enrollment, so that adds an increase there. We also moved a position um, that was previously paid for a part-time secretary position that was paid um, from school choice. We moved that onto the general fund. Um, and then those two new hires that I referenced are also here on the bottom. So with our all funding sources, um, revolving funds and other grant monies that we know that we're gonna be able to rely on, the school's total operating budget will total $5,691,066 for FY21. I know that we had need to talk assessment and probably there's some school choice questions as well, but I'm happy to take questions on this summary before we move on. Is there an updated one of this? Yes, there is. I don't think I... That's an extra okay. copy. We did email it around. Um, I didn't see it. But I'm happy to send it again if yep. you don't have That'd it. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, I thought I would at least start off by complimenting you on what's a... I know you don't have all the pieces back there that are out there, but um, Shelley has put together a very comprehensive budget package that is one of the clearest I've had presented in my many years on the, on the committee. Um, and so I wanted to commend you for that and also for going back and taking three years of history to really come up and fine tune each of the individual line items a little more clearly, especially around the just the prior year. And so I think it's, this is a, a very good budget that really identifies the priorities for the school. You worked hard with Tina and Darius and other members of this, you know, the school community and professional staff to, to come up with a budget that I think really reflects the needs of the school for next year and at the same time is conservative in that it really doesn't add anything that we don't already do except for very essential services. With, uh, two part-time hires to meet special education needs more than anything. So uh, I did want to compliment you both, Thank you. all three of you. A, a good job putting together this budget. So um, <clears throat> I know that you've got limited things to work with back there. Um, or I can share that if anyone wants to see. Well, a couple of quick questions. Sure, Jeff. As far as school choice, how many students do we have coming in for school yes. choice? Do we know? Yes. We can see what current enrollment is, and uh, I think it's heavy. Thanks. They, they usually have to wait until April when we have a general idea of what the kindergarten uh, enrollment outlook is. And then we also get a clear view, um, although we usually don't have a lot of change in the other grades, we get a clear view of what the other grades might have for open slots or, or potential. So uh, what we can tell you is current enrollment, if, that, if that's okay. helpful. Yeah, that, that would be fine. I'm mm -hmm. just curious, a couple numbers, that's all. Right. If you have those. Which, which numbers? <laughs> The school, school, what, how many school jobs do you have? Right, for, school, this, okay. for this current year. Is it 68? 68. 35 and 33? Yeah, 68. Right. 68. 68. 68. That includes pre-K, though. Yep, pre-K to six. There are four pre-K students, so there's 64 between the other seven grades. Okay. Does that include or not include the nonprofit students that we're, we receive? The nonprofit students we receive. Right. Yeah. What is like from what the is that and so What does that so statement forth. mean? That does not include. They're, they're not school choice. They're they're right. town residents. So they're right. They're, do they're we, part do of we our, have a number of those yeah. on those? No, uh, I do not have that. I would okay. not have that. No. <clears throat> I just just curious for could, down the road. Could couldn't begin to tell you that number. Um, if that's something that you think you'd might need, I think I could ask someone to put a number like that together for us if you want. Okay. Um, and one more question with the the summer program, is that fee based as far as um, parents contributing to that? Um, Tina, I don't know if you could speak that more directly, but it is some both. Um, sorry, I was writing. Can you oh. repeat it? 
it is Pardon? he was asking whether the summer program was like fee based parents pay for that it is a mixture that there's it's some mixture. some fee and then there's some grant money we get you know federal grant money i think and state grant money to do some and some, some of it is sped services it's sped services that kind of thing to keep keep kids learning throughout the throughout the summer months right well i just you know i happen to notice with the with the and obviously it, it makes sense you're going to have increases in salaries but i was just wondering if there is some way shape or form with that with the summer program if there's additional monies available whether it be grant money or whatever yes. to help support those increases the increase to salaries isn't with summer because we we pay through stipends so it's, it's reflected in the state the line item it's not in the salary line item thank you yeah. mm -hmm. so could I? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna. Um, I was gonna circle back to uh, kind of the reason we're at 2.9, based on you know, versus another number as we discussed last meeting. Um, mm -hmm. When you you know, I know Ken wasn't here, but just to rehash that, we were talking about um, help with um, part-time psychologists and and also um, the other position you had, the occupational therapist, because I think the needs that. You know, since I've been on this board, which is not a super long time, but just ever since I've been here, the needs of those, um, of that group of, of um, kids in the school has just grown. Like every year, it's yeah. more and more and more uh, needs uh, for uh, social emotional learning and, you know, all the professional development we're gearing towards that. And, um, you know, I, there shows some increase in professional development here for the IAs and all to kind of, I know that you've been using that a lot. Right. For, for that, and and it really does. Um, I know it, it increased costs, but in the long run, um, if we can keep those students in our district and not pay an out of district and transportation, um, it makes it makes a big difference on the bottom line in the long run. And you know, and and meanwhile, we build an amazing program that's renowned and, and may, may attract a student that would be paying a tuition to come uh, from another district. So in the long run, it may help. But um, but even still, it, it gives us the tools to deal with the the issues that we're having. Um, and, and doing a better job of educating the kids where they are. Definitely, we're building a program with the same resources that we've had, and the team has done an excellent job of pooling those resources and um, meeting the needs of the students. But these students require intensive services, mm -hmm. and it, with the addition of um, the school psychologists, we'll be able to lift them possibly even pay that. And I guess. In, in some manner of answering your earlier question, and you, you know, you honed in on, on school choice, um, you don't have the total numbers in front of you, but Shelley's outlined a total budget of $5,691,000. Right? Yes. So that's page of your green sheets. Yeah, yep. he is. Oh, he's got I did, I gave him a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 447000 of that is covered by school choice funds. Right. And uh, then the balance, you can see the other breakdowns across the, across the board. Um, you know, school choices didn't start off being something that was going to fund large portions of the operating budget. But as you know, over the years, we've, we've evolved to where we have become reliant on it. Um, and we've, made, we've been making a concerted effort to ramp back our school choice enrollments. Mm -hmm. um, and begin to absorb that money that's, you know, being paid by school choice funds right now back into the operating budget as, as judiciously as we can. Right. Yeah. Um, so that we can reduce the reliance on that in case that program ever happens to be altered dramatically. Um, Obviously, I think we all understand the school choice is kind of like a double-edged sword. Right. It is. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's a fine line. It's a balancing act with the school choice money and especially a how it's applied. Right. So as you were saying, you don't want to become reliant on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I understand where you're coming from yeah. with that. Especially and, when you look at it, that what it costs us to educate each student and we're mm -hmm. getting reimbursed for school choice. Right. Other than special needs. Right. But it, it's it, a losing it, proposition. It, well, well, to say it's coming from funds, it, from school choice is kind of well, misleading. Can I answer it? 
It, you can answer if you want. So it, it respond. Um, oh, yeah. respond. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it does. Um, yes, it, that's something we're looking at really closely. I think when I, you know, when I was on like the first year or so, you know, we had made the decision. We saw that it was out of balance, and we were funding another whole classroom where we didn't. You know, we're funding a classroom and an IA or two, and all the apparatus that go with the classroom, and the money wasn't there. You like you you were losing money at that point, um, and we had and and uh, so we didn't take that step, which has been felt as a ripple throughout the <laughs> throughout the school for many years now. Um, as we dropped one class, then it just that followed all the way through. So you had a lot of staff changes all the way up through. But we did it because we thought. We were looking at the trends and, you know, working with the collaborative and all that we were seeing, everybody was talking about declining enrollment, declining enrollment, like we were going to have less kids, and that hasn't borne out. I mean, we are taking very good care to make sure that we aren't doing another whole classroom, but we are taking advantage of the extra 5000 you get for the child if you're already going to have a teacher in there and you have that room, then it makes sense to pull that money in, but um, definitely we take your point of... It makes no sense to, you know, just blindly take kids in because, mm -hmm. you know, you want to build up this thing, but you realize you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're just going to cost you more in the long run. And I understand it's schools like Whitley, they need school choice, just keep the doors open. That, that's, it can be tough. Yeah, that's... But uh, the problem I also have is that it causes such a ripple effect. Right now, if I'm correct there, is we have 172 school choice people at Frontier. It gets compounded up there, yep. no doubt, because you're and pulling so up from all the effect. And when there's 600 students at Frontier total, you're looking at a little over 30 percent school choice. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you know it's. It does in the long run. It does. And right now, Frontier is looking at an increase of somewhere between five percent and eight percent on their budget. Mm -hmm. So you know it's. Yeah. No, no. 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 The no. number you gave us was a little over five percent. No, nope. 2.84% 2. 2. is the increase of frontier. Your assessment, oh, assessment. Yeah, your, your assessment, assessment. Yes, your assessment, assessment. Yeah. but that's the budget yeah. increase. You can't, your assessment is based on the wealth of your town, so, yeah. and the number of students you're sending us. So yeah. we don't do that for but we, we look at it, obviously. Right, right. So right, but you're talking about budget growth. Yeah. You gotta be, you know, we're not sending out budget growths of 8, 8, 8%, 5%, percent, that kind of stuff. We're keeping it below 3% this year. We're fortunate to be able to get below 3%. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. But, yeah. um, but we'll definitely <clears throat> keep a look at that and yeah. then make sure that, it, you know, that affects other essential services within the town of Europe. Sure, no doubt. Yeah, we have no doubt. Well. Ed education has, will, this year, 21, will, will eat any new growth we've had. Uh, in the town. So anything that we want to do in the town of Deerfield, you have no money because just the, the growth of education costs and a lot of it's just salary um, because we don't do a lot of new programs here. It's just salary and benefits and all um, just swallows up, you know, 300 and something thousand dollars a year. So, and you know, you can only raise your taxes two and a half percent. So you wind up with not a lot of money at the end of the year. But um, and here again, I don't want to be taking that, you know, the way I look at it, in my understanding, and the way I look at what Deerfield provides for education for our citizens, is probably some of the best you can get in the, in the state. Country. And Frontier is an excellent institution Absolutely. as well. But, you know, unfortunately, in the position I'm in now as a selectman, I have to look at what mm -hmm. effect it's having on the town in trying to balance that out. Yep. As you can relate to it and kind of care about it. Yep. The, the sad part about it is, is with all towns, you only you have a pool of money and everybody's trying to do the best they can from that same pool of money. Yep. And unfortunately, that pool of money is getting smaller and smaller, <clears throat> as we say. Not you get some you have some revenue growth. But it's not enough to keep up with the growth that the towns and the schools actually want or Correct. need. Yep. And so it makes it very difficult. You, you get into a balancing act once again uh, to try to keep everybody happy. And obviously with Deerfield here, again this year, as you all know, Trevor, oh, yeah. we're, we're the world of her. pressed again as far yep. as what we can do not only for schools, but for the, for the town, all the town departments too. And this budget is an excellent budget. I mean, a 2.9 is a, is 
is really good. I mean, it's not we're not looking at five percent increase or six percent increase or something. And even with a good year and a good budget like this, we're going to be devastated in town. We just there, it's we're looking for a couple hundred thousand dollars, and I don't know where to find that. Um, I mean, with any of the projects, not that's not including like any money we have set aside in capital reserve that we've been trying to do things just just the operating budget to make sure we have police and you know and all the other things that run in town we're you know we'll have to make some cuts because we just don't have enough money because it all it all it goes to education which is you know it's important it, it's a driver of why people buy a house here and move here and live here and well one thing i would like kids. to say is that with the school system here especially the elementary school and I, I believe it applies to frontier a little bit but you go throughout the state and i don't think you'll find especially another elementary school as well staffed as what deerfield has and they are very well staffed compared to most towns i'm not just saying teachers but the ias and that and i'm not saying they're not important because they are obviously mm -hmm. but when you look around and you uh, go to other school systems I th don't think you're going to find one that is as well staffed as this. But that's why Deerfield is desirable. You do get what you pay for. And, and we have wonderful teachers. No mm -hmm. doubt about that. Do yes. we have? Yeah. But uh, how many children do we have on the charter schools right now? I don't know if I have that right off the top of my back. <clears throat> It's a sore subject. Yep, it's very difficult. We haven't paid it. Show us if you live in your field. No, people haven't paid it, but you're the academy for men. Yep. It is. It's, it's tough, especially when you have a wonderful education system already. Um, it is hard to see kids, you know, leave our system. For whatever reason, it's a parent's choice, and it, it is what it is. But um, it, it, and w I went to a um, education um, meeting at JFK in Florence um, on Monday night, Tuesday night, something like that. Um, it was 70 minutes on Chapter 70 funding, um, held by Tracy Novak and, and Massachusetts uh, um, Association of School Committees. Really great education on like when education started in 1623, right up to today, and what, what laws we have and who pays for what, and it's a, it's very tough. In charter schools, you know, the state has pitted charter schools and districts against each other, and it shouldn't be that way, and they recognize that. Joe Comerford recognizes that that's, you know, that's their making. It's not anyone's fault. It's not a parent's fault for making the decision or anybody else's fault. It's just the way they set up the funding schedule, and um, we only get, money back we lose a lot of money every year to that and we only get money back on the increase so if, you know you so if you if you only got five thousand you, know, you could spend fifty thousand dollars but if you spent fifty thousand five hundred next year you only get five hundred bucks back mm -hmm. so it's it's tough we lose a lot of money to that well once again as we've talked before though the, the state is going to have to uh look at the aid that they provide because for the rural schools it's just not happening True. and if that doesn't increase obviously down the road here we're going to be we're going to have a very tough time to sustain mm -hmm. the school model the way it is yep we may have to be forced into a situation at some point in time here where if they don't increase that aid we're going to have to start thinking outside the box and yeah. that's, that's going to be tough. A lot of people aren't going to like that. The Student so. Opportunity Act went a long ways for the state. Um, did not help rural schools and, and us out here at, at all. I mean, very little. Some transportation, a right. little bit more reimbursement for charter school increase, but um, just really didn't make any amount of money. And then you have to write a bunch of plans on how you're going to spend this windfall of money. So people have to spend forever writing a plan on how you're going to spend another fifty thousand dollars when so it just really is, is, is right. not working. so there are studies just simply doesn't go very far and joe, Com joe comifer got in a lot uh got in these studies so they are important to look at and keep on top of of um addressing these needs in the rural school needs and declining enrollment schools that kind of thing so there, there's hope that that will will take shape but they 
it's a large increase in spending, but it, it's there's no money, <clears throat> so it's just shifting money around and how much different towns are going to pay and that. So, so it's, there's no magical amount of money that's getting added to education yet. So, so uh, charter student going out, we have five students for the price of ninety-two thousand dollars in change. Yep. Thank you. That's obviously not in that budget because that goes straight to the town. You guys know that. Thank you. So, any questions from the, the assembled multitudes as well? <laughs> any, any thoughts? Or, uh, anything else back there? Or we can. Uh, well, here again, I'd just like to compliment the school systems that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very proud to tell people I'm from Deerfield and what we are. Uh, you know, we have excellent staff in place. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate part is just the money. And, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. And because, you know, we have a lot of residuals on the side that we've got to think about. We do. And it's just... We need to flush our toilets. Yeah. <laughs> So we, get everybody. We, we, we have to look at our budget in total. We're going to have to make some cuts. So I just like to say I'm, I'm really appreciative of the budget you put forward. Um, I think it's very, uh, I mean, people obviously worked on it to contain costs. So, but we have a few more weeks to work on ours and try to balance. So we may be back for other considerations. <laughs> Could you, could you shed a little light as to where it stands currently? Um, well, we're about, I, I would say, um, I mean, this is just me, but we're, we're probably $150,000 short of my comfort level on where we should be. We're, 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 we're moving money around, and we're trying to figure out how we're going to do stuff. But, um, yeah, total total for everybody and everything so um, at least that's my opinion yeah just very quickly I, I, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn but we had a finance committee last week and with what was budgeted at this point we had if we funded actually you can't even fund everything that we had but with cutting a few budgets uh, to bring it in line, somewhat in line, it would leave us with $16,000 in free cash. And we have never done that. We've always been around the two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars minimum of free cash to carry over. So that's why we're saying, you know, the money comes from the same pool and it kind of puts everybody in a in a difficult situation. And I hope I'm not speaking out of term, no, but no, we're still, just, we're still, we're still, we're still working on the budget. budget. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just for the general audience, free cash is not something that we can find anywhere on the streets ourselves. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a term within the town's or the uh, state's budgeting it's process. It's a terrible that, term. It's a terrible term, but uh, once a town completes its fiscal year. It's uh, left with what they spent, what was budgeted, and the difference, if it's a surplus or if it's, you know, what was budgeted is higher than what was actually spent, you end up with a, a surplus that's called free cash. And that gets certified by the state, and that's a number that's very, very important for the select board and finance committee as they go through budgets in the spring to help them balance out actual revenues that will be coming in with money that's been there before and put it all together to come up with the final plan. And that free cash of about two or three hundred thousand is, you know, to take into account anything that happens between town meeting and the end of the year in June. And, um, you know, we have COVID-19 right now, which is wreaking havoc on the economy. So not as many cars purchased, you know, the, the, the revenues that you expect to get in excise tax and things like that, that you kind of conservatively budget, um, those fall off the map when no one's buying and no one's shopping. You get 
you get no excise tax coming into the town, and now all of a sudden you expected to have a little bit of you know room there. You don't have any room left, and, and it's tough. You can't. You've got to budget. We only have. We've set aside a hundred thousand dollars as a town for a reserve fund. You know, for a rainy day, like what happens if something bad happens, and that can get eaten up really fast. You know, even just a boiler breaks or the dishwasher breaks here or something like that. There's there's all those things that we, you know, have a little bit of money set aside in a year, but not much. It's pretty tight. So um, makes us nervous. And just to make sure everybody understands, any money that is not used by the town gets carried over, but that's usually applied to the next year's budget to right. reduce the next year's budget. Right. So it's right. not like it's just building and you have all sorts of uh, free money around. Yeah, we need to start the next year. So, thank you. Yep. Um, any other comments or thoughts from the assembled multitudes? Hearing none, we will close the hearing at 6.32 p.m. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your input. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you again in the coming weeks, and hopefully we don't see you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, this community is still going to go on and just reflect on the city of our city. Day by day. Yep, we're looking at that day by day. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we have a game plan. Uh, Carol and I have met several times um, to talk about our game plan if we have it mapped out. Um, currently, it's going to be part of my report later on, but you asked, and since people are here and may want to leave, I'll <coughs> with sure, your permission, I'll go that route. Yep. Um, basically, we've increased, um, obviously, we're increasing awareness. You know, I've, I've had several letters out to families um, and staff. Um, we're increasing the hygiene of the building with more wipe downs and more thorough wipe downs of areas. We're increasing the hand washing of students and, and faculty during the day because it's the number one transmitter and when they leave the building as well to go back out to the populace and when they come in the building to join the rather our, own, our internal community. Um, and as I explained, you know, I met with the Deerfield staff um, yesterday um, just to talk about this. You know, when we look at schools, schools are the, the hub point for the community. Um, for, for, you know, obviously we send from all the different houses around town, they meet during the day and they go home, unlike any other kind of workplace outside of UMass. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just saw they did. Uh, but, so, um, but the idea is that, um, you know, within that, if we have to close the building, it, it'll be based on um, an assessment of a, a uh, either an outbreak in the community that's tied to the building, or a concern that we need to slow down the, the passage of COVID-19. So, um, and that's really the main kind of, the, and with this particular virus, it's not really affecting children, um, but the children are carriers of it. So, and since they're getting it, but they're not being hospitalized. One of the things I'm going to propose to the board tonight is that the town of Deerfield declare a state of emergency. We already did so we, last night. We did it last night. We did. We missed the meeting last night at yep. work. Yep. And it's just so we can have funding set aside. Correct. So I saw that Brendan had set up the fund. Yes. So, we did it last night. But that's something the school can piggyback on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. we, we need to clarify Frontier, but um, absolutely any cost, the reason one of the reasons to do that is number one also to convey that it is a serious situation, but that all expenses can be um, start being um, categorized and, and hopefully be reimbursed at some point. So Brenda has set up, our accountant has set up a, an account, so any expenses related here in the elementary school to um, sanitation and cleaning and extra staffing and extra expense all can come and um, should go to Brenda for um, to go into that account. So we have an account, uh, accounting and hopefully reimbursement at the end of this event. But it's going to be a long-term event. Uh, Darius has been absolutely fabulous with communication and meeting. Um, we've had several meetings, as you said, and we, we have uh, policies that are evolving during the day. And the decisions are changing during the day. Um, so, I mean, we're trying to be on top of this and make as most informed decisions as possible for the safety of everybody. I have to apologize for not being informed. We, we upgraded our email system, and I've stopped getting emails. 
I, I don't take a hint well. I was going to additionally, I did send all the correspondence that I sent to the families to all the select Yeah. as well, just so that you're aware of what we're doing in school because the duties are tied that way. My wife works in the guidance office, so she keeps me informed. But Sometimes I have selective hearing. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all. So we'll move into the regular meeting portion of our agenda. And uh, first item would be the minutes of February 5th, 2020, which we'll, I will table until our next meeting when we've had a chance to complete the drafting. Um, we didn't get a final draft ready for this, this particular meeting. Um, uh, financial statement and warrants. We, we all received a, a memo from Shelley indicating that our budget still remains on track with uh, the original budget numbers that were put out at the beginning of the year. We have nine warrants totaling $92,048.36 that we're looking at this evening and signing. And are there any other comments on the financial statements and warrants? Do you have questions? Capital thing a little bit is just you know I want to say the bathroom looks great the public bathrooms in this hall have been redone um, during break I think with a the break they look really good new stalls and everything right that's been great so we'll keep moving around on that um, as we can um, but I I know that um, dishwasher's been an issue like keeps breaking down and um, I was going to talk to Bill about that and see what he thought how long I had talked to the the staff um, and they you know it's it's constantly breaking so it's one of those things we should keep an eye out for this year but we don't have it on a capital we have it four years out to look at a, a major kind of go through that kitchen and do the larger appliances and ovens and things like that um, but that I don't think is going to make four years because I think it I don't know, you guys may know more than me but it has been I only knew it had to be repaired. I didn't know that the repair was not going to hold in four years. Oh, okay. So I mean, I get, I I'll get more information. That'd be it. Yeah, yeah, just so, wondering about that. Yeah, like how um, long? So because it had is it, is it a continual repair problem? I don't. I right. wasn't told that part. I was only told that there was there was an issue. With it. Okay, so, that'd um, be great to find yeah, out. I just wondered if, well, if I don't it, know if it's ever been replaced. So I can't right. remember. <laughs> if it's been it's got a few years on it. If it hasn't been replaced, right? The important thing though is it's on the capital plan for for Alex. Yeah. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. Okay. So, okay. No other, no other public comment. Any public comment? This evening? Oh, I thought I saw a hand going up, but it was just put, adjusting the glasses on top of the head. Okay. It's like an auction. <laughs> Okay, unfinished business. <clears throat> Further discussion on the proposed FY21 budget. Um, does the committee have any thoughts or anything else that they wanted to see addressed? Or I know you had a good discussion last meeting, so we did. I think settled on where we're at right now, and again, we don't have, hope we don't have to come back. But mm -hmm. I mean, I would make a motion to. To approve this, if we want to vote it at this at this time, um, I don't know if there's any other discussion to have on it right now or not. Um, so you would, you're making a <coughs> a motion to approve the uh, proposed FY21 budget in the amount of I don't have it in front of me, but five million six hundred. No, we're just going to no. approve the general fund. No. Oh, no, thank you. Green. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I got it. If it doesn't die, <laughs> I had it. There, there we go. What is it? Four million nine seventy-four one thirty-three. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the FY twenty-one budget at four million nine hundred seventy-four thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars. Which is second. Nine percent. Very second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions will have it carries unanimously, four to nothing. And we will have that sent off to the Board of Selectmen as the final number for your, your debates right now. <clears throat> Thank you again for coming. Mm -hmm.
Because yeah. I feel like this is, a, you know, we did a good job on the budget. Yes, sir. Thank you. I specifically turned off the lock. I guess it didn't work. All right. Back to the agenda. <clears throat> Discussion and vote on the following policies. Uh, I'll just read the JBB, e Educational Equity, JB, which is Equal Educational Opportunities, uh, which was changed by the MASC. Um, JFABD, Homeless Students, Enrollment Rights and Services. JFABE, which is Educational Opportunities for Military Children. And JFABF, uh, which is Educational Opportunities for Children in Foster Care. All of these are um, policies that are put in, are being put in place or revised uh, under guidance from the DESE and from Mass Association of School Committees. And they were presented last month. Okay. Uh, well, I just had a question on like, I guess IHA, the, the vote to remove the basic instructional program. I, I was wondering how that, where that fit into. Wrong one. That, that's Don't that's later. Ahead. Okay, thank you. I was wondering if that was. Those Forward are all or new. back? I those just didn't notice that. The others. No. Okay, those are all new. Perfect. All right. Um, I'm good. So, but yeah. So, and I said it at the last meeting because it does. So, you have two sets of policies in front of you. One you did a reading through last meeting. Yep. Um, very. They're very straightforward um, about rights. You know, meeting the rights of all students, and, and you can by just by reading the names of these. These are subgroups of populations that need to have some extra um, policies to support them to make sure that. Their living situations, such as being homeless, being in the military, being in the foster care system, um, making sure that they are um, that we're taking care of them, mm -hmm. because of their living situation is not being moved around the country. And all three of those scenarios, we're not um, uh, we're not, not working with them or, or uh, working against them. So missing, can't find the word. Um, so those are straightforward. There's another set of policies that we're doing the first reading of, which we'll get to next. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So on the policies from last month that we're putting up tonight, there's two copies of each. Is the old one first and then the new one? It's not totally obvious. The ones with the handwriting on them I think are new? Those are new. If they felt newer. Yes. Yeah. Versus the, that first packet with the... Uh, the Yes. yes, and you can it tell is. the best way to figure it out. I don't know how yours was, like I said, printed off, but yep. you can go to like the, you look at the end and you look at the revised date. This yes. is something from long ago, many, many years ago, and you know that's the other policy. Um, some of them have the, the mine are all marked up by, look down and mark them up for me. So mine look different than yours, so that I, yeah. so I um, but yeah, it goes, the, it goes the new one, then the old one. At least that's how mine was. Oh, yeah, new, yeah, For example, the, the new ones are going to say source MASC October 2019 at the end of it, or September 2019. One has a revised date of 2018, one has a source date of 2019. Okay. Yep. I would say if you were not to adopt them, we would have to have a policy subcommittee to Review. look and to, <laughs> to come in compliance with the law to do what the policy says. I am so you're welcome to, to go adopt. to the policy subcommittee. But <laughs> I just want to be clear I understood which ones we were approving. The old catch 22. <laughs> Some of us have been through a few policy mm. Mm. A few. A few policy <laughs> yeah. meetings. There is the One person sure. in particular has been through more than anybody. That's true. So, that's true. <clears throat> both here and probably in her. They keep coming back. They do not stop. Later. 
Um, okay. So you don't need them each individually voted. No, we can, I do. We them as a full. I will entertain a motion to approve policies JBB, JB, JFABD, JFABE, and JFABF as written. So move. Second. Any other questions or thoughts? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's approved for nothing. Unanimous again. Thank you. <clears throat> So we move on to new business, and that would be the first reading of various policy changes, and I can turn it over to Darius. And that goes to your question, Trevor, which um, Thank you. Um, I don't have the answer to your question on that. So basically, they, the uh, MASC has gone through these <coughs> policies and, and called these to be redundant, unnecessary, due to either the repeated <laughs> elsewhere or found in state law. And so, um, you know, the basic instructional program they're saying is a redundant. Um, I was asked by the Waitley Committee to find out where the redundancy is on that particular one. They'd like to know that. So yeah, that I first know. one just seems like why would we pull out, you know, I'll just read this. The law further states the American history, civics, including the Constitution of the United States, the Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, local history, and government will be taught as required subjects in public schools. My guess is that it's going to come out of, I was going to go looking for it, and I guess it's going to be under the math common core, okay. math core gotcha. requires us to teach those subjects. Yep. So it's going to probably be there, but I will firm up, because you don't want that to disappear. Or not no, it's right. right. It's, uh, We're not going to stop. Yeah. And, uh, it might be something in mass general laws as well. Yeah. That are Possibly. cited here. <laughs> so. Correct. <clears throat> So um, again, they're voting. They're asking us to remove that from our. You know, they they're, they help us keep maintain um, our policies to keep them up to, of the, with not having um, out of date policies. And the next one is student insurance program. Um, again, medical insurance is now for um, children. Is a law in Massachusetts, so I can imagine that's where that's coming mm -hmm. from. But again, they're saying to remove it, go to remove um, the guidance program. Um, we're not looking at removing our guidance program, but they're saying that this is coming from, again, I think it's coming from um, Mass Corps, I mean, the, the General Corps curriculum. Um, and then Gibson solicitations, that's now, that's a law, mm -hmm. under the ethics law, about um, giving gifts to teachers and so on, and other staff members. Principals is not listed here, you're still good. <laughs> you can still get apples. You can still, you can still, you can still get apples. Still get yes. Um, and in fact, on some of them, they showed a cross reference on that last one where the other laws are. The last one, which is, um, and I'm, I'm running off of this policy newsletter that you guys got back in early January, where these are all coming from. Yes. Um, is public comment. And this is basically that this policy has been updated to clarify the purpose and guidelines relative, pub, relative to public comment at school committee meetings. Revised language notes that the public comment is not a discussion, debate, or dialogue between individuals in the school committee, but rather an opportunity for individuals to express opinions <coughs> on issues within the school committee spoke, scope of responsibility. Revised language emphasizes that all speakers are expected to present their remarks in a respectful manner. And the chair of the meeting, after warning, reserves the right to terminate speech that is not constitutionally protected. Um, refer to the complete policy that follows for full text of language, um, revised language. This policy also provides as a good idea for school committees when dealing with constitutional issues, seek advice from district council. Yeah, I think this, this is so, a result of a case, I think. Yes. Recently, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. And so, just kind of clarifying the language, obviously, some of you probably have used head of more. Um, but within it, if you don't have a color copy, it's get, it gets, probably gets very confusing. But, well, I imagine it'll come up a uh, but obviously what's crossed out, what's black yep. is the old policy. This is how we kind of, this is the, what's crossed sure. out is what's removed from the old policy and what's red is what's added to the new policy. Right. And so, um, out of all these, and I'll give you kind of the update from the other, this is the one that we had the most um, conversation about. They've asked me, um, the Frontier Committee asked me to 
many times there's only one or two speakers at public comment mm -hmm. in, in, in common and asked if we can put language in here that will allow the chair to waive the policy at the beginning of a at, during a, at their discretion so that if you want to have a conversation, it says something in here that you have to write down who's speaking so that you can keep a chart for the minutes. If there's one person speaking, a lot of our committee meetings, it's common dialogue. I mean, this right. is right even tonight. Even tonight. Technically, you'd have to, you know, you don't have well, the public hearing is different because it doesn't yep. follow the public, um, open, <clears throat> public comment section. But if you're just having one or two people speaking, if you know there's a larger crowd, you may have to have to follow more hmm. stringent so that you can get through into your business and so that you can keep, uh, keep things running smoothly. So, they asked me to look in to have a line in there that allows for you know, one public comment on something. You can ask a question and you can, you can have a dialogue yeah, a right, little bit. Right, and so you can, because they didn't want, the other committees um, really didn't want to lose that. Yeah, the hometown right, feel. The hometown feel, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But, um, so, I'll be getting that, that language changed for the. Okay. okay you there you go. There you go. Nice. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. No votes required under new business, so we are down to reports. Uh, the chairperson can report that you had a good vacation. I will report that the <laughs> weather was good in Florida. That's about all I can report on right now. So um, it's certainly somewhat distressing to come back and, and be faced with the public health crisis that's gripping the world. Um, and obviously impacting school communities very gravely. Um, everyone's on edge. Um, we'll, we'll figure out a way to make it through, and I'm confident in our administration and that the Board of Selectmen, the state, the nation, the world will come to a resolution that works and makes it as safe as possible for all involved. So, true. That's all we can do at this point in time, and we hope that this thing goes away or there's a, a treatment that's soon found that helps with it. So anyway, that's my commentary from, All right. from the chairperson. <laughs> Sounds good. <clears throat> Anything new at the collaborative? Uh, not since the last meeting. Okay, good. And the principal's report. If we want to. We have a lot of great things happening in the schools, and one of them is our new interim assistant principal, Elaine, who's up there in the audience. Please stand up, do a little tailspin. No, you don't have to. <laughs> this is what I do to her all the time. It's so fun having someone new. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, she has a wealth of experience with special ed and behavioral programming as an assistant principal, and she's had a really smooth transition into Deerfield, and we're fortunate to have her to the point where sometimes I forget she's new, and I'm like, hey, can you remind me that you don't know who everybody is <laughs> or? Um, so, that, you know, thank you, and I know that she's introduced herself to you. And so. welcome to our community, thank for you. sure. Very she happy. used to know who everybody was in the yes. school. Yes. <laughs> There's still a lot of faces that are still here. I know there are. <clears throat> Amazingly enough. Yeah. It's been great to have her, so, you know, smooth transition in the middle of the year. Um, and we're just really fortunate. It's great. Thank um, you. Thank you. Well, I was going to talk about some of the precautions that we put in place around um, COVID-19, but sure. I think I'll leave that to you. Did you say that was in your report? Yeah, or you already kind of did it. So, yeah. You know, I mean, in short, summer uh, to summarize, there is um, increased sanitation procedures that are happening and hand washing. So the custodians, a big shout out to the custodians mm -hmm. who have really ramped up their sanitization schedules, if you will, um, and, and teachers for um, changing their routines and structure in the classroom to allow for some of the hand washing. So um, that's a, a little bit of an update there. And then our diversity leadership team, which is read, led by students, our very own Jen Smith, hair toss, no? Okay. Um, and Giselle Richardson, who is our school psychologist, uh, come up with many different activities for students across the building. And also, you may have gotten some emails about Pink Shirt Day. Um, for those of you that know what Pink Shirt Day is, we're celebrating that March 27th. Wear anything pink. 
Um, it's a day that in, in Canada in 2007, there were two students that uh, teased another student for wearing pink and, uh, nope, there were students that teased another student for wearing pink and two students stood up and handed out pink shirts for everybody to wear on the next day. So as a show of solidarity, that symbolizes how DES stands together as a community for kindness and inclusion. We're asking everybody to wear pink, um, anything pink, pinkish. And so shout out to the diversity uh, leadership team because they have so many exciting events that happen throughout the year and we're fortunate to have them too. Uh, facilities update, our cameras have been installed. We have nine new cameras outside and inside and they should be up and functional by the end of the month. Great. They're up and secretive right now. Uh, only I can view them uh, and not tell me where they are. Yeah. Um, and then the kindergarten is in a sweet and sticky situation. They're just they're studying maple sugar and uh, syrup, uh, maple sugaring, and they've tapped some trees outside. <laughs> I giggle a little bit because there was an email that went around, and so if anybody's on the email chain of like, tell the kids not to dip their fingers in it and lick it. Right. Uh, with the coronavirus going around, so that's a little funny. Um, and then. Uh, we were fortunate to have Rockridge Senior uh, Center come in as part of our Read Across America Day and share our stories with uh, students. Read Across America was another uh, well-attended event for students. So that's my I've seen a lot of social media on the uh, Read Across America thing that DES is doing and the kids, uh, parents are posting what the kids are reading and the different things they're picking out each day. And I'm seeing it on the um, Deerfield Parents site, Deerfield Now site, and it's really, um, Really inspirational to see, you know, I always remember that too when, when Caleb was here, and it's great to see that everybody digging in and expanding the reading. And, yeah, yeah, it's great it's awesome. to get into different classrooms and have our guests here, and the children really enjoy Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. <clears throat> um, my superintendent report went out. It's already out of date based on the, how fast things are moving with COVID-19. Um, basically, last week when I wrote this report, we were kind of pushing out to the schools to get a kind of a, a to talk with all students grades um, four through six or four through 12 about get a general baseline of knowledge of what the COVID virus was. We used a brain pop video that was kind of straightforward. There was also an NPR, what do you call that? Podcast. It's like a cartoon oh. scatter. I forget what there's a name for it, but the storyboard about talking about uh, what COVID uh, 19 is. And so, just that they had a, a general baseline of knowledge there. Um, we kind of we did that within all the schools. Um, this week, we are um, kind of ramping things up a little bit more as you know, um, as we're getting advice from the, um, the Board of Health as well and from dealing with the Board of Health, DESE. Governor's office um, in Mass Department of Health. I mean, we're kind of on, I'm on a different conference call or video or something or a meeting or something. We're talking on the phone every day or multiple times a day. Um, we're now kind of in starting. Well, we started yesterday launching. We started Monday to, to plan to, how we were going to execute it. But the and I was talking about this earlier. Increase of washing of hands and trying to make it additional practice in the classroom. To, and, and the hope is to do it without changing the course of the day. You know, and so each building is, is doing, and each classroom is doing it differently based on, it's not, we're not doing, uh, you know, uh, you know this is, bell rings, yeah. I'm going to wash the hand, but how do we fit it into the day, logical times, and just kind of increasing that, and the more hands, the more hands we can wash by the end of the day, hopefully we had a, a cleaner day than we, had, we were doing before, and the same with our facilities, we're stepping that up as well. Um, we also have created um, a, I'm repeating myself because I was kind of off the, I was kind of not organizing my thoughts before. Um, you know, basically a game plan for if and when um, we have to make decisions regarding um, having cases in the community. You know, we have to, each case is different. And I just have to kind of put out there that the school is going to react differently to each kind of case, depending on how the community is affected by it, depending on the school community is affected by it, and, and, and working with the local and state um, boards of health to um, health experts on how to do that. So it could be as simple as something as we're doing a day or two to clean a building because based on the, that there was a transmission in the building and we're not, uh, you know, or not transmission in the building, concern that the person was in the building, you know, and left, right. left some goodies behind, a, a virus behind that we have to go clean up or 
to something longer based on whether or not we have to stop the transmission within the community, which would be the reason why we would cancel school. And I'm trying to make that very clear because we want this, the, there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of um, information is not flowing very smooth, very smoothly on this. There's, you know, from side that this is some sort of um, made up scare mm -hmm. versus, um, you know, people kind of burying themselves in shelters. You know, we have both, both sides of the spectrum there. We're trying to take each step as it comes, um, make <coughs> decisions that are based on information that we have. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. But we did kind of, it's kind of like the whole how we do a snow day cancellation. Carol and I and others are, are on this list, and we're going to go right through whoever gets information, confirming information, and then working off that information to make decisions based on what we need to do to protect not just the school community, but the greater community. And they really, the fear is the greater community, those with compromised immune systems and, um, or, or older um, with compromised immune systems and, and health issues. So, um, you know, that's what we're trying to make sure that we don't become the hub to spread that, to spread that out. And so whenever we have a, a concern about that, we're gonna address it and, you know, um, we don't know how long it's gonna last, you know, the hope is it'll come and go, but that's not realistic. It's gonna, we think it's gonna be here for a while. Um, as it kind of works its way through. Um, there's a part of us that wants it here for a while so that we can treat those patients coming through. But the big concern is the spreading of it and overwhelming our health services. Mm -hmm. you know, being Western Massachusetts, even Eastern Mass, same problem, increased population. But there's only so many doctors and so many hospital beds and so many, you know, that you need, really need to, we need to help stagger it out as it makes its way I hate to say it, put it this way, it makes its way through the population because it's mm -hmm. going to have to do that in, in some, at some level. Um, and then hopefully in medicines and everything that's catching up to So it's very, very down to talking, but um, trying to do a positive swing. We talked about it earlier this, you know, yesterday. And, you know, um, and we're also at the, at the same time, we are looking at, did you already send your email out before? Did you send the email yet? Yeah, we got more information. Which one? The Friday one. one. <laughs> the which one? Friday one regarding teachers looking yes. at. Yes. Yeah. So um, yes. this is kind of also hot off the press. We, uh, the principals met today. This is a pre-planned day of meeting to look at a lot of a lot of the different things that we are working on. Um, but one of the things we're doing is on Friday, as part of our early release, is we're going. It was a it was a teacher directed day that we have asked to teachers to look at what would it look like if we had to send students home for two weeks. Um, what can we do to continue education? Not a continuation of the continued curriculum in the classroom, but you know, we are our mission, and our you know, you're looking at the underlying mission outside of this you know state natural disaster um, kind of thing is that you know continue kids continue to learn and do things at home that tie into learning and be inquisitive and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. To look at what can we possibly put together to keep that mission alive and that kids aren't just dropped at home to go stagnant for two weeks, but, and also to work with me and with parents. This is all kind of being formulated. Right. It's still being handed right. off to teachers, that's what I'm saying. They're, sure. just, they're, still, they're still processing it, but you know, it can be fun. Yeah, I'm looking at it as, you know, every, you know, how do we just kind of, you know, we keep that engagement going, because we are, we are above, I, I'm gonna say it, we're above average district, and I think we have above average expectation of our kids and families to continue, um, you know, I'm not saying like rote homework, I'm talking about, you know, reading, you know, yeah. you know, if, you know, I think parents as a parent with kids here, um, you know, I want to be, I want to be able to say, my teacher said you half hour each day, you yeah. know, and then yeah. hey, let's do a little bit of this, or, you know, here are some general different ideas because we have different socioeconomic backgrounds and different, you know, um, access to computers and that right. kind of stuff. So right. with that in mind, I don't want to just not do nothing because it's going to be hard to reach everyone. We're going to do our best to reach everyone where they're at and how we can move them forward if, if we have to do a prolonged absence. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, but this will sit on the shelf, right? You know, um, but it's a, it, it's there um, if we need it. Well, so. thanks for all that work. I know it's a lot for everyone. Yeah. That's I've done nothing with COVID the last three days. I know. It, just, I, I know. Like, luckily, the budgets were in good order. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. Been nothing, it's been literally nothing but that. It has. It has. So, it's um, going to continue. The other things on my list is negotiations. Um, we're, we're continuing after the, after, after the one year. Um, contract. We're doing what we're calling cable talks right now, just talking about the different scenarios um, with Shelly, myself, and, and Greg on, on the school side um, and members of the association on the other side, just talking about the different, uh, different. what if this, what does it look like? And we've had one meeting, we have another meeting on the calendar. Um, nothing is binding on either side of it. It's just to really just kind of get the ideas out there yep. about what, what could be possible um, and what our limitations are and other things. So. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, 
The last thing is the Student Opportunity Act. It's the best way to end the meeting talking about that. And so the Student Opportunity Act gave us um, an increase in Chapter 70 money. Deerfield received from my glasses. Okay, I need my glasses in order to see the number. It's so small. It's $9,480. And they want me to submit a report about how we are going to use that money to increase the um, um, meeting the needs of students who are um, are struggling. So within our you know, within our in our school, special ed, that kind of thing. And I got to come up with a two page report, and based on it's got to be evidence based, that kind of thing. And I have to have it by April one. I did all school barbecue. Yeah, all school barbecue exactly. When I went to the meeting the other night, uh, there was a discussion about that very subject, and. Um, we're going to do our part to talk to you know our representatives, Joe Comerford, Natalie Blade. That um, I don't think what you got from Desi for a requirement was really the intention of the legislators when they wrote this. Um, especially, at, you know, I mean, it's one thing if you're getting another million dollars. Well, so so those who haven't followed that, you know, I did send out the, um, <coughs> the, the just the the highlight and then the whole thing. If you really wanted to read the whole thing, but you know, they're really looking at the 35 districts got that what, over 1.5 million dollars extra money. Yeah. They want accountability to it. Yeah. It's that, a little bit can. different about how you're rolling out that kind of increase. Right. Um, our increase, you know, basically when you talk about choice, it's two students of choice give us more money than the state did this year. Right. So we start talking about, and in other schools, it's even far less, um, you know, percentage-wise of the growth of the budget. So right. um, anyway, I have to follow the law. Yep. And so basically they said I could, you got to love this. I can submit this. It needs to have school committee approval, but I can submit it prior to school committee approval to in order to meet the deadline by April 1. <laughs> so obviously they value your input. Yeah. I do as well. No. So, <laughs> we trust you. So, <laughs> we so trust you, um, it's going to be part of the joint meeting because it's because we're going to lock, we're not going to do no anything different. We're not going down a different path. The majority of our, um, where we're, where we're you know, uh, doing change in our district is through our professional development. Right. It's going to fall within that model, so we're going to tie that into the joint meeting. That way, I don't have to bring um, right. Kim out to multiple meetings and you know, do, it, do it four times. You can hear it together because we're going to have basically the same plan in each building um, to address those needs. And it's it fits in what we're already doing with right. asking. Yeah. It's just annoying mm -hmm. that since 1980 they've been every year giving us less and less money, and now that they're getting us even less, they want to be accountable more. for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. Exactly. Um, but that, yeah, it, I, it's more fun for you to report that. Than yep. Than and that'll be mid-April, mid we'll have a meeting on that, right? We have the joint meeting on April mid. 11th. Yeah. Fourth. Okay. It's coming soon. Yeah. Okay. What is it? So it'll be, af it'll be after the April. 11th, 4, 7, right in the middle. <laughs> so it's April 7th, we have a joint meeting, and then we'll, we'll be doing school calendars then. We'll doing, yep. Um, He's tired. Doing a lot of that. Some bits managed trivia that's easy to hit you guys all at once with. Um, I have to use outside, not outside, additional administrators to talk about. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. I think COVID. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's already in my mind. Yeah. It's already in my mind so, that I'm not there. <clears throat> having a joint meeting like that. There's already talk that other committees are talking about not meeting um, together. Um, you know, I had a conversation with Amherst who was talking about that they have larger crowds in this, but. Mm -hmm. um, should the rise of concern in the community be, we may have to look at how we do business for yep. a meeting or so. Yep. And we'll, I'll be in touch via the internet. Right. <laughs> Not in person. Um, I think that was all I had. Mm -hmm. And then I just had an update of all the different little things I'm working on. Thank you yep. very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Based on your report, I'm assuming we do not need to enter executive session. Nope, that's going to stay on the agenda through uh, yep. negotiations in case you ever have any questions at the part. So that brings us down to adjournment. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Trevor, a motion? Second. Two seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At 7.10. Yeah.